Well, it's time to pray because it's Sabbath, and uh, we need to pray because if the Holy Spirit's going to speak to us, we need to hear what he's going to say. So let's just bow our heads, if possible. Father in heaven, we ask that you'd bless us now. You always do. You sent your son to die for us while we were yet sinners, and we need to learn to appreciate this gift. Respond, Lord, and I pray, Father in heaven, that as you talk to us now, we ask for your Holy Spirit to talk to us so that we would understand truth, and may the truth set us free. Lord, you are good, so good. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, that we have so many. Thank you, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Don't believe everything you think, part two. Remember the first part was part one. And there were ten things that we dealt with at that point. And I'm not going to go over them. You'll have to look it up from the last, just look it up on YouTube. That's what she does to her dad all the time, too. Okay, understanding cognitive behavioral therapy. This is, uh, a girl wrote this, and then I... Massaged it a little bit. <laughs> so you're going to get some different, anyway, i got to read this thing because I get scared, okay? Knowing that your thinking is messed up in your life is a momentous event. Remember last time we talked about stinking thinking, all right? So uh, let's start off with Psalm 91, uh, Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the meditations of my heart. Okay, so it's what you're thinking about. John 8, 31 through 34. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Indeed, you and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered, answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. We're talking about mental stuff here. All true obedience comes from the heart. Desire of Ages 6, 68. All true obedience comes from the heart. It was heart work with Christ. And if we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims, so blend our hearts and minds into conformity to his will, that when obeying him, we shall be but carrying out our own impulses. All right, now we get into it. Like many girls, Anna has suffered a heartbreaking number of traumas in her short life that have decimated her self-confidence filled her with anxiety and snatched away her joy. Once a ray of sunshine in the home, dejected Anna is only a shadow of who she once was. At the bidding of her family, Anna finally agrees to go to a psychotherapist that uses cognitive behavioral therapy. But as she enters the therapist's office, Anna thinks to herself, I will never get better. What's the use? The first step for Anna is to change her negative, self-fulfilling cycle is to become aware of her thought process. Anna needs to know that she is valuable and that she can change. Again, Desire of Ages 668, the Lord is disappointed when his people place a low estimate upon themselves. He desires his chosen heritage to value themselves according to the price he has placed upon them. God wanted them, else he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them. Cognitive behavioral therapy is an evidence-based structured psychotherapy that focuses on changing unhelpful thinking and behavioral pattern, patterns resulting in healthier ways to cope with life stresses. CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, is shown to be effective in treating mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety, personality disorders, marital issues, and substance use disorders. Many studies show CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, to be an, as effective as or more effective than other psychotherapies 
or even psych psychiatric medicines. Since the 1960s, CBT has made significant advances based on research and clinical practice alike. Today, it is considered the gold standard psychotherapy. CBT is set apart from many other forms of psychological treatment because there is an abundant scientific evidence that CBT methods produce actual change. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, I have to tell you this. Dr. Neil Nedley, who's a Seventh-day Adventist, believes in this stuff, okay? He's done the research on it. So, CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. All right. I knew you'd say it. Although CBT, CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapists, gather a significant history they primarily focus on the client's current, current lives as opposed to their past. Very important. CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, homework, often focuses on reframing neg negative automatic thoughts. This is the key. Negative automatic thoughts. It's, it is ideal to work under the guidance of a CBT therapist, cognitive behavioral therapist, However, you can learn from practicing the basic principles of CBT. And that's what we're doing here, basic principles, okay? I have to throw in these texts every once in a while so that you know that it's not just psychological stuff, but it is psychological stuff. Anyway, Philippians 3.15, Therefore let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.5 through 6, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I got a whole thing on that, but I'll stop. Romans 12. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How CBT works, cognitive behavioral therapy, helps you develop awareness of your triggers. This is the key. Your triggers, your self-talk, or automatic thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Remember how Anna first went into therapy saying, I will never get better. What's the use? She may not even be aware that she said this negative automatic thought. Anna will feel hopeless if she truly believes that she won't ever get better. And because she feels hopeless, more than likely she won't be fully engaged in the therapeutic process and will only make half-hearted attempts to do the homework given in the session. If she doesn't change her thinking or behavior, she won't get better. So what's the uh, definition of insanity? <laughs> Keep doing the same things over and over again. Okay, well, anyway. She would, <laughs> this is what we do. This is what I have done. That's why I'm reading it to you. She would then obviously maintain her belief that she won't get better and will believe that her thought is valid when in reality her thoughts would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, this is tough. The first step for Anna is to be able to change her negative self-fulfilling cycle is to become aware of her thought process. Okay, you have to acknowledge something. Okay, I have stinking thinking. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Matthew 11:30, the next verse. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Well, I also thought of this one. Well, as I was doing this, it's a good thing I didn't go over it too many more times because there'd be a lot more text in there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Several steps help us understand CBT better. Hear your internal dialogue. In order to de develop awareness of your own negative thought process, you can use a simple thought record 
to begin to log your negative automatic thoughts. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in a way that's everlasting. But first, let's understand how our mind works. We first experience an activating event or situation, which then leads to an automatic thought. Check this out. The situation itself does not determine your automatic thought. But how you perceive the situation is what determines automatic thought. Following your automatic thought, you will experience an emotion, which then determines a behavior and or physiological response. For example, the situation for Anna was walking into the therapist's office. Her automatic thought was, I will never get better. What's the use? She felt hopeless as a result of her automatic thought, and as a behavioral response, she made little effort to improve her psychological well-being. Recognizing how your thoughts impact your well-being is important. So that you can discontinue negative thought patterns like the one Anna found herself in, you tend to stuff or avoid your emotions if you tend to stuff or avoid your emotions and thoughts, this may take some time to master. Yeah, it does. An easy way to start is to notice emotions that cause distresses. Emotions get our attention more rapidly than thoughts do. Your emotions can cause you to cue to hone your potential thoughts or images that you contribute to emotional distress. When I first was taught, this is the girl talking that wrote this article, when I first was taught how to do this in, a gra in graduate school, it took me two whole weeks before I could even begin to understand what I was thinking when I had distressing emotions due to the habit of avoidance of my negative emotions. Who can relate? If you can't determine what you're thinking, hit, hypothesize, Hypothesize <laughs> as to what you think you may be thinking. This will help you to begin to strengthen the skill of self-reflection and eventually begin to understand yourself more fully. Therefore, helping you to apply the appropriate intervention. Fifty pages left. Analyze your internal dialogue. <laughs> Once you have identified a negative automatic thought, or a theme in your negative automatic thoughts, it's helpful to determine whether your thought is indeed true. Pay attention to this. Is the thought you're thinking true? All right. You can do this by reviewing the list of cognitive distortions to determine if your negative automatic thought fits the description of a common distorted or irrational belief. That was last week. Or you can read this book. It's a good book called Telling Yourself the Truth. I've given a few out. Please read them. Cognitive distortions are common, crooked, or irrational beliefs. If you determine that you have a cognitive distortion, then you have agreed that your belief is irrational and is in need of change to a more rational thought. In Anna's case, the belief that she will never get better falls into the category of all-or-nothing thinking and fortune-telling. Listen to this one. All-or-nothing thinking is when one sees two categories. Things are seen as black and white with no shades of gray. We know this belief is all-or-nothing thinking because she uses the word never. Mm. When she says, I will never get better, fortune-telling is the one when she makes a negative prediction about what will happen when other outcomes are more likely. We know that she is using fortune telling because she has been taught, she has been through other stressful events in the past and was able to over, overcome them through the use of counseling. She also may be doing some emotional reasoning because she has, so, has drawn the conclusion that she will never get better due to how she feels, not based on evidence. Go by your feelings. Don't trust your feelings, Mark. <laughs> it's not for you guys. Eh, maybe it is if you can deal with it. Test whether you have sufficient evidence 
for your negative automatic thought. Negative automatic thought. Test it. Is it true or is it just you? Another way to determine if your negative automatic thoughts are true is to test whether you have sufficient evidence for your negative automatic thought. This can be done through the use of the Socratic questions such as, what makes me think the thought is true? Or what makes me think the thought is not true or not completely true? Test your thoughts. For example, Anne has been through difficulties in the past with the help of CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, a therapist, and social support, she has overcome these difficulties. So there is very little evidence to support her belief that she will never get better. Now she may believe she has evidence because she feels really depressed. But is our feelings a sufficient base to draw a conclusion upon? But is our feelings a sufficient base to draw a conclusion upon? Your feelings. Okay? Your feelings. Sometimes the evidence you may think you have for why something may be true may not be evidence at all. Feelings often lie and aren't a sure guide. However, it is important to find evidence for why the thought may be or may be not true and then rate it from 0 to 100% as to which side holds more weight. You can use this with a T-bar. By using this model, you can determine if your thought, whether it be true or not, is helpful. If it is not helpful, then it's best to consider an alternative way of thinking. Oh, this is hard. You've got to think hard about your thinking. <laughs> Takes practice, too. Believe me, I've been working on this a long time. Reconstruct your thinking. This is the last thing here. I'm but I could go on. Hang on. To develop an alternative way of thinking about negative automatic thought, NAT, you can... Negative automatic thought. You can use the evidence against the negative automatic thought, I'm supposed to say NAT, to reframe your thought. For example, with Anna, she had evidence of having gone through something difficult in the past and was able to overcome it with the support of her CBT therapist and social support. So she could use the evidence to tell herself, although it feels impossible, I don't have sufficient evidence to believe it's impossible because I have gotten better before when I was in a similar position. She got better before. Okay. Feeling is not evidence of what will take place in the future. Plus, I can't predict the future. It's important that when you're reframing your negative automatic thought that you develop something that you can believe. Otherwise, it won't be helpful in reducing your emotional distress. See why this is going to take some time and practice. However, there are circumstances that when even actual evidence is not believable for someone who has severe depression or anxiety, it is this. In this case, it will take more effort to internalize the truth. But don't give up because it's important to address the root of the anxiety and depression and uproot the lies that we tell ourselves. Search me, O oh God, know my heart. If you're still having difficulty finding a way to dispute or reframe your negative automatic thoughts, it's sometimes helpful to imagine what it would be like to tell someone that you love if they were in a similar situation. Listen to this part. You often will find that it would be difficult to tell someone you love the negative self-talk that you tell yourself. Do you think Anna would tell her younger sister that she would never get better and that there was no use in trying? More likely not. Be kind to yourself. Once you have determined that new, positive, helpful way of thinking, you can put it on an index card to create flashcards. You can even develop multiple flashcards and use a ring to hold them together. Look for the girl writing this thing, of course. Depending on how often... I'm sorry, that's generalization. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Depending on how often you entertain your negative automatic thoughts, you would want to just as often pull out your flashcards to review the new way of how you want to think about things. 
you may experience immediate relief from emotional distress, or it may take time. If you are concerned about others seeing you pull out your flashcard, you can often take out your phone. <laughs> Write it down on there. Everybody thinks you're texting. Time and practice, this is the key, are central to understanding cognitive behavioral therapy. The reward is well worth every effort. You have incredible power to change your negative automatic thoughts. Except to Christ, right? Choose. You, this is your kingly power, your power of choice. You can choose your thoughts. So let's go through Desire of Ages 668 again. All true obedience comes from the heart. It is heart work with Christ. And if we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims, so blend our hearts and minds into conformity to his will, that when obeying him, we shall be but carrying out our own impulses. My prayer, O oh God. So I put this one here at the end. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Let me do that one again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and your mind and your body and your soul. Trust in the Lord. And lean not into your own understanding about yourself or him or others. You, you can't read other people's minds. You don't know what they're thinking. Trust in the Lord. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Well, that was it. 20 minutes on the note. Amen. So I'm going to pray again. One more time, because I feel like I need to pray. Father in heaven, you are good, so good. You are a good, good father. And we thank you, Lord, for always hearing and answering us. And before we were even born, you came and died for us. How can we even conceive of this great gift? May we just acknowledge what you've done for us, how you died and rose again so that we could live and understand that you died for us while we were yet sinners. Teach us, O oh Lord, to have faith in you and to appreciate this great gift. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Papa. That was excellent. <laughs> Blake got the jacket. He said, did he write that? I said, no, that's my book. I got anyway. it from the book. He has been working hard to do that presentation. Well, thank you, Mark. We are about to have a blessing, and we have a special event to celebrate tonight. Come on up, Pastor Blake. <laughs> Happy birthday. So what's the event? What's the, the, the event? I thought you were only 41. You're 43. I am? You got older in the last few years. I didn't keep track. I believe me, I know. It just happened. <laughs> Would you like to give him his birthday cake? Oh, that that's all you get. There's a big one. There's a big one back there. It's a nice cream cake, but I know you're on another protocol yeah, right now. Yeah. So you're 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 walking the walk yeah. and we're glad to have yeah, we'll Okay. Take. Well wait, there's a song. This isn't a regular birthday song. But you know, whenever I get the mic I crave the stage. So here we go. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, the best that you ever knew. Give me a Thank you. Okay, now the, now the rest of you can join me in the typical happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Blake. Happy birthday to you. He's her daddy. He's her daddy. Thank you. Will you have the blessing? I will have the blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the acknowledgement. I appreciate it. I'm going to eat this uh, before it disappears. All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody. Happy Sabbath. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the good message that we heard tonight. You know, I think of what the Bible says, as, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. 
And so, uh, so much starts, really everything starts with how we think, Father. And uh, thank you for the time Mark has put into this. And I pray, Father, that we would continue to study the mind and how we think and replacing negative thoughts with good thoughts, Father, that we can have the outcomes you desire for us in life. Thank you for these dear people here, and uh, thank you for 43 years of life, Father. Thank you for my dear wife and the blessing that she is and my children in this uh, wonderful church family. Uh, thank you for the food we're eating, and may you bless our time and time. In Jesus' name, amen.